Hello guys, welcome to the next part of the 3DS Max Sci-Fi Vehicle. I'd like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series of videos, helping me produce more great content for you guys. So a little bit of work off camera guys, to show you kind of the process. Whenever I work on something guys, it always starts off very slow, you know. But once you've got your block out, as you can see, once you got a few things set up here, it just really ramps up. So you can see, this was the initial, you know, this right here, is a very basic block hill. Then got a little bit more complex, <laughs> then even more complex. And now, so I will show how I made this. Here's how I made this, guys. So one thing I like to do is I like to kit bash objects after I've just made them. So last time, pretty much, in the last video, you saw me make pretty much this right here. All right, so sometimes what I like to do, guys, is I like to just select this and maybe just this as well. And I will go ahead and duplicate this. As you can see, in order to get this, what I went ahead and did is I just, uh, let me just unlink that and I will link uh, this to this. And I'm gonna rotate this by 100 degrees. All right, so I pretty much got that. And so one thing I like to do guys, I like to kit bash pieces together. Even the same piece can be quite effective. And you know, here, I mean, you may be able to tell this is just the same piece, but you can see how like from this angle, they look like they're different objects, even though it's the same object just repeated. So sometimes guys, in order to get your imagination flowing, just doing something like this can be very effective, right? So now I go ahead and I duplicate this, let's say right there. Now in order to get this, what I would do is I would just, for example, maybe, uh, maybe select this and kind of uh, rotate around here. All right, to get that. And then I would just uh, duplicate this again. All right, now as you can see, I pretty much recreated these conditions. All right, let's see. So of course, I do think I need to uh, move this apart. So what I did for this one, one of the reasons they look so much different is because I actually moved them apart a little bit here. So for example, this one right here, I will make this my pivot and I will move this, you know, closer together like this, for example, and this one, and let me delete this one right here as well. And this one, I will move further apart. And this one right here, I will scale together. All right, and then I will select this and I will clone this here as well. And then let me just uh, clone this as well. And then I will, you know, you can, you can also just make some changes here. So for example, you can select this, hold control or hold shift and click here to convert to the border edges and then just kind of uh, chamfer right here just to get further detail. So you can do kind of something like that to just transform from a basic cylinder so they're a little bit more complex, you know, building on the detail piece by piece. And then for this, I would just go ahead and control V to copy that. And I would just go ahead and scale this. So scale it like that and scale like this to get pretty much the wheel. So the reason why I'm doing this guys is because, you know, this is how I'm able to iterate on the design. This is how I'm able to just build and come up with different things to do. Then what I simply did guys is I took this and I made sure it was rigged. So I went ahead and used the link and then, you know, See, link, link this to that, link this to that, link this to that, this to that, this to that. All right, so, and let's see, this one to that one. So now what we've got is we've got this nice system for quickly testing out shapes. So we can quickly test out fun shapes, guys, just like this and kind of fun designs with this. So we can see, okay, what does it look like like that? What if it looked like this? So as you can see, you can get some really uh, nice things happening here. So I took those and I kind of duplicated them along here and I set up this kind of system right here. So what I'm thinking here is that when it wants to deploy, for example, it will start off, you know, like this, for example, and it'll go into its walker mode or maybe it's stability mode. It's more stable right here. And this is like so, right? So now it can, it can walk on that. And when it's ready to go on the wheels, the wheels will be deployed. They would just rotate down, now it's on the wheels. Now, of course, I will need to maybe change this as well. This was my original wheel. 
But what I can also do is maybe make a duplicate of this. So I can always have the original as a backup. So we can always have the original uh, right here. Actually, let me also let me also select this as well. All right. So just in case, it's always a good idea to keep a backup. Here, I'm just kind of moving things out. You can also keep it on a new layer as well. All right. So oh, I just I just pretty much took this right here. I duplicate it. I perhaps scaling scaled it. That's an important part as well. So I scaled it. As you can see, to get this, I then went ahead and I rotated. Remember, the Duty Max remembers your last axis, so you don't have to left click and then move the axis. It just remembers that I'm using the Z axis. So all you just have to do is left click and hold. So as you can see, guys, I was able to do this. And then for the back piece, these two uh, back pieces, I could just rotate this by you know, 180 degrees and also set it up in the correct place, different orientation. All right, so that's how I was able to set this up. So the reason why I'm doing this right here, guys, is because I'm thinking about how I can do this. You know, do I want every single leg to have all the wheels? So perhaps just, you know, right now, you know, I start off with four legs. I'm thinking, okay, what if I have maybe three legs, you know? two legs right here and then a third one in the middle and then when it wants to roll around it kind of rotates the two legs back and just has this because I'm thinking okay do I really want to have you know nine wheels or you know, or let's say uh 12 wheels you know six on both sides or perhaps I just want to have one in the middle so there's kind of a lot of questions I ask as I'm working on this and kind of kit bashing it so I'm gonna go ahead and switch this back to world and kind of make this default all right so as you can see i will need to kind of link this all right now i should be able to just kind of uh okay and press a for angle snap and kind of put that right there all right and i'm going to go ahead and shift a that right there right so as you can see I'm just kind of, uh, I can go ahead and delete these. They have served their purpose. What I can do now is just kind of work out how this is going to work and, you know, how, how large I want this to be, you know. We can see, guys, that once you've got the initial, once you've got the initial block out, then the progress just goes very quickly. So as long as you guys can just make it to the block out, you'll be able to uh, zoom through the design with no problem. All right, what I'm going to do is just to select all this, Control V to copy this. You can also copy as the instance as well. And so now I'll just rotate it like so. All right, and I'm gonna select all this and we're just gonna do a quick symmetry. All right, there we go. So I will go with this one. As you can see, guys, once you build up complexity in a certain part, you can see how now it looks a little bit off here because we've got so much complexity here, yet this looks so simple. So now we can go ahead and do a little bit of a block out here as well. As you can see, now that we have greater complexity on the legs, the rest of the design looks too simple. Now we have to do a little bit more work to catch it up with what we've done on the legs as well. So let's go ahead and do some work on here. We'll go ahead and like this and let's go ahead and detach that as a clone. You know, we can just reuse assets by just duplicating them out. I'm going to clone this out here. And we're going to delete everything except the original cylinder. And we will rotate by 9 degrees. Center the pivot. Alt A. But we're just going to have, for example, let me switch that to world. And we will just use the X position. 
I will change the material. Right, we can have multiple axes in the same smooch water for us. As you can see guys, I'm just gradually increasing the complexity here. Right here, if I want to add more complexity, I could just, for example, tessellate this. Remember guys, this is a great situation to use Smart Extrude because, for example, I could hold down Shift just like this. I could just hold down Shift to cut all the way through there. And I can use Symmetry to take care of the other side. If I wanted to do that. So, we can also just select all this right here. And we can even do things like scaling it together, for example, and then kind of moving it as well, like so. Oh, looks like we got a little problem right here because of the shell modifier. It's kind of, uh, if we see what's happening here, it's kind of shelling in the normal. So we're getting this. So in order to fix that, what we can do is just select this edge, move it a little bit to the right. Or what we can do is simply change the order of things. We can simply put the shell on top of symmetry. And now we fix that like so. So sometimes the change the order of modifiers can be a great help as well. So as you can see, I'm just modifying things, changing the material here and there. Finding out what works better, experimenting with a color scheme. You know, maybe this should be gray, maybe it should be an even darker gray so I can duplicate this and maybe use an even darker gray right here. Right, I will individually outline this and then do the same for that. And then I can extrude and scale them. Not like this, but we're gonna change it to this mode. Now I can scale them like so. So just a nice little detail we can add here as well.
Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and take care.